friends. I am so glad to be back. Okay, so applying your style parameters and shopping with a strategy in mind is one of the easiest ways to actually get an authentic personal style. Because having a closet like this, no judgment I've been there, makes it impossible to understand your wardrobe in inventory, find pieces you like, even understand how to build outfits or see the bridges between the different pieces. Not to mention, it does not lead to a low credit card bill. You do not need to be a minimalist or an avid outfit repeater to have a balanced and functional wardrobe. It actually all starts with your shopping strategy. It's a fine balance between what does your closet look like, what does it need, and how are you shopping? And forming that all through the lens of your own personal aesthetics. So before we dive into exact shopping strategy, let's talk a little bit about what your closet looks like today. Okay, so imagine you're staring at your closet right now, but don't actually go do that because I would like you to watch the rest of this video, but you're staring at your closet. What do you see? Chaos sighted. Ideally, you've been taking those daily outfit photos that I harp on you about in every, every, every single video, and you have a lot of style data to pull from. Why do I ask you to take those photos? Because it can really illuminate what are your A plus pieces. What are the pieces that you use regularly that serve you incredibly well in your day-to-day -day lifestyle and that you enjoy wearing? Every time I go through a period of not evaluating my daily outfit photos, I can feel my style flatline a little. So what I want you to do is while you're looking at your imaginary closet, I want you to take all the pieces that you regularly wear and put them on the left side of your closet. And you can do this from memory or you can do it from your daily outfit photos, but put them on the left side. Now just generally look at those pieces. How do they fit your style parameters? What you may have this beautiful idealized image in your head of what you'd like to look like, but if this is what your most frequently worn pieces are, then you need to create a bridge between those two and start understanding how to implement style parameters with lifestyle. And looking at your most worn pieces is a great way to do that. You can also see if there's a common color palette, a common neckline, a common hem length, any of the common threads within your most worn pieces. This is gonna give you valuable data to examine your own style. And this can also highlight some things that you might need to work on. For me, I needed to work on color for my style a little bit. My wardrobe had gotten so massive over the years and I hadn't been focusing on color. I'd been focusing more on style lines and silhouettes that I like that when I looked at my A plus pieces, all of a sudden I was like, there's a color disparity here. There's no flow. My A plus pieces should all feel like they're in a family together. So it can highlight the good and it can also indicate some of the things you might want to make as fashion goals. This can also help you illuminate what categories you seem to gravitate towards most. When I looked at my personal closet, I noticed that longer or midi length dresses, knit dresses specifically, seem to be a very easy yes for me. I wear them regularly, I feel good in them, and they hit a lot of my style parameters and they work beautifully with my lifestyle. And as I mentioned in the YouTube community, I have a self-guided personal style workbook that you can find out more information below, or you can join the waitlist. It's a very affordable product and it really helps you do the soul searching for your style and really start to use your style parameters and hone them down. It's kind of like the framework for your personal style. So all the information on that is linked below. You should also look at how many of those items you have. My personal style data showed me that yes, I do like midi to longer length knit dresses. However, I also have enough of them. Not listening. I'm not listening. Now it could also help you to see that maybe those pieces on the left side of your closet that you're regularly wearing are not your A plus pieces in terms of your own style goals. And if that's the case, then you really need to audit your closet. You need to get rid of the dead weight and then you need to develop a wardrobe gap list and see well, you know, I'm always wearing these black leggings, but black isn't in my color palette. I don't like the way I look in them, and I don't think they fit my body type. Start researching then what could be replaced them. Shopping needs to fill wardrobe gaps. It can't just be done for a dopamine fix. Those are the ways that we clog our closets with pieces that are just a waste of money in the end. So we want to look at our closets as sacred spaces, as a representation of ourselves. Because we can do a whole video on closet auditing. If you'd like that, let me know in the comments below. And there's a great tip from David Zyla that I was reading in his book here. And he talks about if you are going shopping, sometimes it can help you for one entire week 
to only wear your A plus or your best pieces and for the entire week. And if you can't do that, you may you need to out for repeat a little bit if you don't have a lot of A plus pieces, but it can really illuminate how you feel and the response you get when you wear your best of pieces. And you can start, begin to start to translate that into something more manageable for your every day. And it can indicate what you need to actually go shopping for. So you have a small collection of A plus pieces on the left side of your closet, but you're thinking, but Gabby, like I have a huge amount of other pieces that are just hanging out. What do I do with them? I like to do the hanger trick. Um, I believe in closet auditing regularly, but if you don't want to do that, start with the hanger trick. So what you're going to do is you're going to flip all the hangers one direction. And then as you wear the piece and you put it back, you're going to flip that hanger with that piece the opposite direction. After a couple months, you're going to scoot over all the pieces you've worn towards the left side of your closet. Anything that doesn't get worn, get pushed to the right side of the closet. And you know, after six months or so, assuming that it's not a seasonal issue, those areas on the right side should go in a different area. And before you let those pieces go, you can also start to jot down notes of what you don't like to wear or what you don't regularly wear because seeing what you don't like can be as informative as seeing what you do like. And sometimes it can become much clearer when you see your nose. So if you're staring at your closet and you're like, well, I don't even know if this out, like, I don't know if this garment even suits me, but I don't want to get rid of it at the same time. There's usually three reasons that that is the case. You either have an emotional value to it, a use value, or a monetary value. And all of those things are holding you back in your personal style. Garment isn't serving your style today, let it go. One of the biggest issues people have with personal style is they are dressing for the person that they were two years ago, five year, years ago. I even have this trouble sometimes because when I did my personal style workbook, I found that I actually readjusted all of my adjectives to something more applicable to my lifestyle and personal style goals of today. You may give yourself excuses like, but it could have a lot of wear out of it. Or if one thing was changed, it would look really good. Or, you know, I spent a lot of money. One day I'll figure out a way to wear it. Or one day I'll fit into that garment again are all doing your personal style a disservice. We need to see our wardrobe inventory. We want to streamline our closet and we want to have crystal clear fashion goals. Shopping actually doesn't start at the mall or when you're online scrolling. It starts with your wardrobe and your personal style goals. That is how you save money and that is how you end up with a closet full of items you actually love to wear. Before you hit purchase, let's examine your stats. How is your closet looking? What does your wardrobe gap list look like? How many times have you worn that piece? How many times do you think you'll wear this new piece if it's an update? What percentage of your closet is being worn right now? You can, can refer back to the hanger test to see the data. And how much of your closet are you actually wearing and is functional for your lifestyle? And how would that new piece fit in? Have you gotten rid of the dead weight of your closet? Do you have closet clusters that are functional? And how is your style working for your personal expression? Do you feel good in 80% of your closet. Whenever we have a fashion want, we want to make sure that it would seamlessly fit into the A plus or golden pieces within our closet. We don't want to add any more C minus pieces that drag down our average. But Gabby, what if I just want to have fun with my fashion and just try a new look or buy this outfit because I want to look like this inspiration? It's okay to do that once in a while. You can have the one night stand version of a fashion purchase. Just don't make it a habit because your closet clarity will suffer. And my final tip about this is beware of knowledge accumulation without actual implementation. It is so easy to feel like you've been working on your personal style for years and years. And then you have all this data rumbling around in your head, but you haven't actually applied it to your personal style. You haven't delved into any one of these things and how they work with your fashion expression. That's like learning 15 different languages, but only catching like five words of each language. You can't speak a single sentence. You can't communicate with anyone. So really fine tune what you want to put in your style toolbox. Understand these are the three things I want to focus on. These are going my style toolbox. I'm going to explore. I'm going to take the fashion photos and then I'm going to come out with data that is helpful to honing my image. Okay, let's talk now a little bit about shopping strategy and I'm going to give you an example of pitfalls or shopping sins as I like to call them. The first shopping sin, which is the one that I am most guilty of and I have recently cleared my closet of a lot of these purchases 
is occasion shopping. Every time I occasion shop, my poor closet lets out a frustrated sigh and my personal style suffers. Ah, not again. This type of shopping usually leads to good enough purchases and very rarely will lead to your A plus or golden items within your closet. So occasion shopping can mean a few different things. The first one would be actual occasions, like events coming up. I have my best friend's birthday party in two weeks, so I need an outfit to look really good in that. We're not looking at a macro perspective of our personal style, and we are essentially settling. So if you're not sure if occasion shopping might be one of your sins, here's how you might feel um, when you look at your closet. You feel bored when discussing your closet because it doesn't have something new, it all feels old and worn. Hint, it's because those items are not representative of the true you. You have closet envy or everyone else's style or closets feel so much more exciting than yours does. Your shopping becomes highly attached to your mood and emotions. You shop when you're bored, you shop when you need to pick me up, or you shop when you're excited. Don't! If you're the mother of the bride and you want to buy a beautiful new dress, that is totally okay and not a shopping sin. What we want to avoid is the impulse to just buy something because we're feeling low or we don't want to do the hard work that our closets actually need. You know I preach about closet audits and creating a wardrobe gap list. However, sometimes when we go into a store or onto a website with a one-track mind, a single item purchase, we can also end up settling. But if you're still in the messy middle of trying to figure out what your style toolbox is composed of and what your closet actually needs, or worst case, your closet is a complete and total hot mess, then what you're going to end up going into a store like Nordstrom's, you're going to go and pick out a pair of trousers and you're going to say, I need to, you know, I also need a cardigan to go with the trousers because I don't know what I have in my closet that even works with the trousers. And I do need the trousers and there's only five trousers that I like in this color. So, you know, one of these is going to be Let's look at an example. Let's examine Lily's style to a box. She's a Kibbe soft natural with a Kitchener dramatic and mean romantic essence blend and leans towards deep bottom. She likes using the truer tones within that palette. She's transitioning her college girl style to a job appropriate wardrobe. These are some of her A plus pieces that the commenter listed specifically. And she's on the hunt for a blazer because that's what people wear to work, right? And finds these three while shopping. All three fit and all three are within her budget. Let's see why none of these options are the best. Let's examine what the style transition looks like for Lily. It feels big, right? College to a business casual environment, which means she may feel the need to buy a whole new wardrobe or look more traditionally business-like. But just because it feels big for the individual does not mean that the that is the scale to which your wardrobe needs to change. How many people buy a whole new work wardrobe and actually keep and wear those pieces a year after being at that job? Not a lot. In fact, in-person experience and day-to-day -day office living is what is going to give you the style direction you need for this transition. So before Lily buys, she should ask herself these questions. What does professional mean to to me. For Lily, it means fitting in and feeling like she's ready for this job. What will the office job expect of her look? It's a casual work environment. Just look put together and relatively modest. What style lines do I want to use? She likes to use the soft natural lines that just accommodate width and softness for her curves. And color seems to be a guiding factor for her wardrobe thus far. What vibe do I want to give off? She wants to be taken seriously in the workplace, but not lose her personality. How can I get the most outfits with the fewest pieces? This is especially important in the beginning. This is where we knock the blazer out as an option. Blazer screams business or professional, but they are certainly not the only way to achieve that look. And given the casual vibe in the office, they might even be a poor investment over time. These are all too structured for her current style goals and they won't feel like her. And until she knows the environment better, a blazer doesn't seem like a prerequisite. And maybe instead of just going straight to the shopping, she explores some inspiration or fashion mindset looks for business casual. Like these style lines here and these colors here, they exude personal personality but still look office friendly and maybe they can evolve into a future outfit formula going into Nordstrom for a blazer would have led to a poor choice she's better off vetting her most immediate needs something for business casual that works with her current wardrobe and then slowly transitioning her closet one piece at a time so her best shopping strategy would be actually to invest in a great trouser and a dark autumn color palette that already works with some of her more modest polished tops or sweaters that can be dressed up for work or worn casually out. Slow and steady wins the fashion evolution. Single goal shopping needs a framework and needs to be vetted to work. The one is sales shopping. We all know sales shopping is so good. We get a good price, blah, blah, blah. If you won't buy an item at full price, do not buy the item on sale. 
because here's the thing, it is wonderful to get an item at a lower price, but you need to value that piece at the original price and really see the value it can bring to your wardrobe. I'm not encouraging you to spend more money than you need to, but I am encouraging to vet the piece and make sure that it's been a, in an actual closet necessity before you hit purchase. So Lana is a soft dramatic with soft autumn coloring and a Kitchener dominant natural essence with a little bit of romantic. She loves Victorian fashion, Edwardian fashion, and art deco or 30s influences. She's following the lovely soft dramatic Reddit group and another user is raving about this dress that's on sale for 70 bucks. Over 50% off and a great casual summer dress that can work for SDs theoretically. Lana thinks, hey, this could work for me. It's a close match to soft autumn, maybe a touch bright. SD friend with the right accessories and has a wild flower pattern so that could work for my natural essence but the problem is that it doesn't speak to lana's unique style expression and her personal interests of edwardian and art deco this dress is 159 so a bigger investment but it's definitely soft autumn it would work nicely for a kibby soft dramatic who likes to integrate the natural relaxed elements of the kitchener essence and if we look at some Victorian inspiration, we can see some similar style lines being used, and we could even glam it up with some art deco hair inspiration. Sale shopping leads to FOMO needs. We quickly vet it against a few select parameters and click buy, but that first sale dress isn't going to be an A plus piece for Lana. Let's do an ROI on these two dresses. The first sale dress gets worn about four times and really only in summer because it's not her favorite piece, equaling to about 17 dollars and 50 cents per wear and it doesn't seem to meld with some of her other eight plus pieces the second dress transitions from spring to summer because she likes it so much and can be dressed up or down because it works so seamlessly with her own fashion expression so she wears it 12 times over two se seasons of owning it costing about 13 dollars and 25 cents per wear to start it's okay to spend a little bit more money if it's an a plus piece over time the difference will be made up and the last thing I'm going to talk about really briefly is comparison and insecurity. Social media has absolutely impacted our spending habits and our closets. So Terry is a suspected soft gaming and a bright winter with an a Kitchener Ingenue and Gamine Essence blend. She wants to look comfortable and authentic and polished, but still feels appropriate for the office. She, she loves oversized clothes, but it just makes her look wider. She's strolling, scrolling Instagram and sees a style icon rocking these oversized trousers and thinks, oh, I love how she's pulling that off and purchases only to find out that they are not in her color palette and on her frame, this specific cut doesn't look polished and she ends up feeling a bit uncomfortable in them. Instead, she should have waited to buy these trousers. They are bright winter, have a bit more crispness to their shape and still have a loose feel without swallowing her smaller frame. And she could take some outfit harmony tips from a fellow soft gamine like Winona Ryder or how the Olsen twins balance out larger pieces and learn to break traditional style rules by creating their own outfit rhythm and cohesion. When we buy without vetting, we see the piece through the marketer's eyes. The only one putting you in a style box is yourself. The more you explore your style expression, the more you walk away with a strong framework. Here are some things you might think if this is your problem. Those feelings are all totally normal, but once you start to really understand your true fashion expression, it becomes super comfortable to express it. And you don't fear what other people think because it makes you feel good. So what you need to do is you need to research, pause, purchase. So whether you're shopping in a store or you are shopping online, the need to walk out with a result is so incredibly human. So trying things on is super important to authentic personal style and to creating clothes that really work for your body, not the other way around. When I was a self-described fashion chameleon and I just wanted to create an individual look, so I was occasion shopping for that look, this led me to just never try things on. I don't need to try it on because I knew it would fit good enough. But we are not trying to fill our closets with good enough or so-sos. We are trying to fill it with all the A-plus pieces we can. For instance, when I was doing the workbook, I realized that diagonals really harmonized with me well. So I went and I tried on some different diagonal style lines. Where could I put the diagonal? Where did I like it best? Turns out it was very in line with one of my style toolbox, my Kitty Flamboyant ID. I liked it when it was a wide and across my shoulders. I did not like it when it was narrow and confined and made me feel bigger than I actually am. And trying that on before purchasing is how you figure that out. 
looking at someone's outfit and copying your own version of it can help you create style data points. And it can be good if you're in a fashion rut and you just kind of want to shake things up. However, you need to evolve past that. In this fashion game, we are not collecting new items to get to the next level. We are honing the item. Stephanie is a flamboyant gamine with Kitchener gamine ingenue and a bit of ethereal essence in her blend and a dark autumn color palette. She likes the 2000 style on Y2K and wants to come across sassy. She spots this look and this look could totally work for an FG easily. And if she was in the early parts of her style toolbox building, maybe she just recreates it. But Stephanie has been evolving her fashion for a while. So let's see how we can get the same vibe, but tailor it to her. Let's evaluate the mindset behind her inspiration and some of the basic outfit components. It is a playful, sexy vibe. It reads, I want to look hot, but not too serious or mature. It has a lot of horizontal lines, relaxed bottom with a crop top, and bold Y2K accessories. Stephanie wants to look sassy, so let's gently tweak our inspiration. We can start with some low-rise 2000-style jeans and a darker denim and pair it with this Y2K top that has ethereal notes to it, and it shows off her stomach, which helps with those horizontal lines she likes. For hair, let's go more sassy or ingenue with something like this and try these accessories. It has a similar vibe to the inspiration, but it feels more in line with Stephanie's sassiness and blend. A plus pieces are hard to come by. It can kind of feel exhausting and sometimes it can take the initial fun out of shopping. But once you really start to hone your pieces and you develop a little sacred closet space filled with all pieces that make you shine and you feel beautiful in, it will become easier because now you've started to get the rewards. Honing your wardrobe and you only have those eight plus pieces in, it doesn't feel so wild in that sense to then spend the money on a tailor. So here's what you need to know about tailoring and fit. So let's look at an example of this. Chloe is a Kibby Rheumatic with a Kitchener Dramatic Essence and has a deep winter palette and gives off silent killer vibes. So she's shopping the reformation sale and comes across this dress and thinks, well, definitely silent killer and the fabric feels real right for the dramatic essence and my vibe. Maybe I'll just tailor it to fit my body since I've stopped occasion shopping. I have the budget to spend to get an A plus piece. Maybe I could just shorten the hem, add some waist definition like with some darts or even a great corset structure and some internal chest support and maybe a closer curved style line. But seamstresses are not magicians and they cannot do these things to this garment. Major rebuilding, refitting is a very difficult and expensive endeavor. This would not be tailoring. This would be a completely different garment. So knowing what small tweaks can bring an A minus piece to an A plus garment is key. But turning a C minus option to an A plus piece is not usually possible, even for a very, very talented seamstress. If you've ever heard the Kivi rumor that he doesn't like people tailoring pieces, I believe in my own interpretation interpretation he is talking about when people try to change the heart of a garment to be something completely different. There are limits to tailoring and small fit tweaks to your body are great. Major style line changes usually end up messy and awkward. So I want to encourage you to avoid impulse searching when you're on your style exploration. I know it can be easy when I say, oh, explore the dramatic essence by trying these lines. Or someone says, well, flamboyant naturals accommodate width, so try an open neck blouse. Well, I don't have one, so I'll just buy one from Amazon. Don't buy pieces for exploration. There are tons of better ways to explore what you already have in your closet and find out what you don't like, if most of them are no's. Or you can learn how to sew. There are so many ways to explore a style without having to buy, 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 buy. So Kitchener relies heavily on color. So if you're questioning in essence, I would start with your coloring and contrast level first. Next, don't overly obsess about trying the right pieces. Examine the vibe of your outfit and the energy it gives off. There's a really, really large range of how an essence can be portrayed. Next, examine how the pieces and vibe suit you. Continue to explore it or compare and contrast it with other silhouettes. For for me, while I don't think the playful energy or small proportions are horrible, I think they just don't make me shine as much as the longer, bolder, and deeper look. Sometimes I like to do a little test if I, need, if I feel the need to buy something. I need to create five outfits 
only using my A plus garments with the piece I'm ready to purchase. And if I can't create five outfits, then I really have to consider how it's going to alter my wardrobe balance. Remember my little town analogy in some of my previous videos? We need the bridges, we need the cars to be able to go from piece to piece to piece. We don't want a bunch of dead ends in our closet. So let's look at an example of a splurge purchase. Of the item, it felt like it fit my parameters and it could be my go-to non-tote style bag. I could afford it, but it was definitely a larger purchase and it made me nervous to spend. I examined my recent style data and felt it would fit with any one of my outfit choices and styles. I bought it, have owned it for over a year and a half, and have continually worn it about four times a week and through all seasons. I wish I could have non-gold hardware, but I still love it. Cost per wear to date is about $14 per wear. I like what it adds to my outfit. Given this bag design is from 1961 and it came back in style, I think it's not within the heavy trend cycle. Will it always be my go-to bag? Maybe not, but it's classic in shape and color and I don't feel like any design element will make date it quickly. Sporges are okay, they just have to be done with care and within budget. For instance, I also bought this bag in the past and I regret it. My first designer bag I've ever bought and I think it's absolutely beautiful, but you can't wear it on your shoulder, the straps are too short, and my bigger bags get heavy. Not a great combo for me. Plus it's delicate and the wear marks from rubbing have caused some bald spots. It wasn't, in the end, a smart purchase for me. So, let's say I, Gabby, was shopping and stumbled upon this vintage dress, only one of them available and in my size and budget. I examined it quickly. Would work for an FN? Yes. I like the wrist and curves and longer hemlines. Also, yes. It's close to my color palette and the vibe seem right. I should buy it, right? Well, I can answer this honestly. No, this, mis this may fit a lot of my parameters and preferences, but it wouldn't be an A-plus garment on me. First, the color is a bit saturated for me. While it does have some deepness, I think the overall brighter reds would wear me a bit. Second, my lifestyle doesn't have any needs for any more floor-length silk dresses. I have some, I wear them, but my inventory is maxed out. I think the shape of the neckline might be a bit awkward on me. I prefer thin straps with a more squared off shape. It might seem like I'm being nitpicky, but this is what you have to do to get A plus garments. And lastly, it doesn't fit any of my wardrobe gaps. The only gap on my list in the dress category is one that fits my mom events, like school parties or graduations that look casual polished. This dress does not suit that. It's a great dress, but it wouldn't be for me at this point in my style journey. If it really felt like it might be a contender, I would jot down the brand and snap a picture and wait three to five days at the bare minimum. If I look at all the things I've bought secondhand vintage or consignment, I have a lot of regretful impulse purchases and can really only think of one time where I regret not buying. The odds are in favor of waiting. I hope that has been incredibly helpful for you guys so far. I hope this gives you a little bit more of a framework of where you want your style evolution to go and how you can properly support your own framework of your style. And once you start expressing yourself through personal style and finding strength through style, it will be kind of an addictive thing that you wanna protect. In the next video, I have a couple options for you, so let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. Until next time.